Um, starting out with infancy. Um, breastfeeding is extremely important. I know a lot of people do tend to use formula nowadays. Ends up taking a lot more money. Um, but breastfeeding is so important because you really give your baby a lot of antibodies and nutrients that are just impossible to get from formula. So it is important to breastfeed for at least the first six months. Um, after six months of age, you would want to introduce an iron-enriched baby cereal um, so that they can get the iron that they need. And then, of course, just progressing the infant is tolerated, um, starting with the softer foods and then moving on to more solid foods. You do want to be careful with honey. Honey is one thing that can cause infant botulism. Uh, it's real important to not provide your child with honey uh, up to one year of age. Fruit juice. This is, I think, good for everyone, not just infants, is really to limit the amount of juice that you drink to about eight ounces a day, and you really should dilute it. Plain juice is real high in carbohydrates and sugar, so it's really not a good source of, um, it's not very healthy for you, basically. It's got some vitamin C in it, which is great, but it is good to dilute it so you don't get quite as much. Uh, with kids, too, some common food allergies are eggs, milk, peanuts, soy, wheat, fish, tree nuts, and shellfish. Um, you do want to wait till at least a year, and even then when you start introducing them, to make sure that you're introducing them extremely slowly, one at a time, and make sure they don't have any reactions. Okay, moving on to childhood now. We're just going to speed through these life cycles. For children, um, you do want to introduce as many foods as possible, and it can take up to four to five times of introducing one food item before a child will, will take it. Um, so things like broccoli. You know, if you, when you eat broccoli, you want to act like you're liking it and that you enjoy it, and your kids will be more likely to eat it. If when you or your husband or your wife are eating broccoli and you have this horrible look on your face, your kids are just going to get this horrible you know, feeling about it as well, and they're not going to end up eating it. And again, that goes with the second part here. Your child will follow everything you do, including your exercise and dietary habits. Um, as a dietitian, I hear a lot of stories, and a lot of stories I hear are about uh, people who are exercising, doing an exercise video, and then their two or three-year-old will be right next to them doing the exact same move. So it really is true. Whatever you do, your children will also do. Um, nowadays, childhood obesity has gotten to be a huge problem. Um, it's really important that you encourage unstructured play with your kids. Uh, when I say unstructured play, you know, sports teams are great and that kind of thing, but going out after school and playing, you know, telling them they can't come in until dinner time. Um, you know, they need to release that energy. They've been in school all day. They've been cooped up, so get them out and get them playing. Screen time. Again, now we have more video games. We have computers. We have all these different things that kids like to sit and play on. And the main word there being sit, that's what's called part of the reason that this childhood obesity epidemic is happening. So you want to limit that screen time. You know, maybe there's a time um, after their homework is done that they can have an hour or two hours of screen time of their choice. Um, also, offering healthy snacks is important, and you're going to see this throughout each one of the life cycles. Keeping healthy snacks in your home is extremely important. Um, you know, a lot of times people keep chips or keep cookies or these kinds of things to have maybe only every now and then, but I would suggest not even having them in the house. Don't even have them for every now and then. When you go out of the house, when the kids go to grandma's or when they go to their aunt's or uncle's or when you go to your mom's house or whatever, that's the time to have the treats, not when um, you're at home and can always get to them. Yes? Uh, what kind of snacks um, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And there's also a bunch of information up here that does have a lot of healthy snacks. And if it doesn't answer your question completely, let me know at the end, and I'll be happy to name some food, few for you. Thank you. Okay, it's also important to keep kids involved in meal preparation. Kids are much more, more likely to eat the food if they're preparing it. They feel proud of it. They feel um, like they want to try it, where if you prepare it, they might not be so crazy about it. 20-minute um, rule. Uh, this is under childhood, but again, I think it works for everyone. What the 20-minute rule is, if you, you help yourself to a serving, you know, you, you get your plate and you sit down and eat your food, and you want to go up for seconds. Instead of just allowing yourself to get up and go for seconds or maybe thirds, wait 20 minutes. Tell yourself in 20 minutes, if I'm still hungry, then I'll go ahead and have that second portion. Most of the time, people eat too quickly. They eat so quickly that they don't even realize that they're full, so then they end up overeating, and by then it's too late. You've taken in too many calories. Maybe you're uncomfortable, that kind of thing. So, you know, waiting 20 minutes between each serving is a great idea. Um, clean Plate Club is old news. Um, a lot of, some of you may have belonged to that, uh, where your parents said you have to finish your food before you get up from the table. You know, that's really um, not the best way to handle things. Uh, what that teaches children to do, and adults as well, is to ignore their hunger or their full signals. So when they're full, they don't even realize it. 
ignore it, suppress it, and then it just goes away after time. So it is important to um, listen to your body and eat until you're comfortably full. This says to encourage water, milk, and limit sugar drinks such as juice, pop, um, Gatorade, any of the flavored uh, drinks even, drink mixes, are going to, again, be high in calories and high in sugar, leads to unnecessary calories, which leads to weight gain. Feeding responsibilities. Um, my husband and I, we don't have kids yet, but we, we already argue about this. We already have conversations about how this is going to work in our household. Ellen Satter is a woman who does a lot with child nutrition. Um, you know, she has these certain principles that she sticks to and she tries to follow. And what the feeding responsibilities, what she believes they should be, and, and I agree with her, are that adults decide what to eat, when to eat, and where to eat. So they're going to provide um, they're going to provide the meal, decide what it is, and where you're going to eat it at. The child decides how much to eat, or whether or not to eat. So it's totally up to them on the amount and how often. Um, again, we'll, we'll see what happens when we have kids, and I. We'll, we, have, we were brought up using different techniques, so we'll have to see. And I know everyone has different things they use in their home. But this is what Ellen Satter says will work to help your kids have healthy eating habits. Uh, adolescent years. There's a lot of different influences, especially on adolescents. Um, they're individual, social, media, and physical. I think media is a really strong one right now. There's a huge increase in eating disorders, especially among women, but it's also growing very rapidly among men as well. And basically, it's because, you know, you watch TV and you see these perfect bodies and these perfect people, and they expect that they're going to look like that, and that's not always the case. And I, I think that it's happening at a younger and younger age. I remember when I was in middle school, it wasn't as important, and I see my little sister, and, you know, in sixth grade, her friends are stepping on the scale constantly. You know, it, so it is, the media plays a huge effect into that. What you can do if you have adolescents at home, what you can do to kind of help with that is make meal time family time. It is important to have encouragement with kids, know what they're doing. And, you know, you see the commercials on that, um, you know, with the stop smoking and all these, and it's all tied together. You can have that time that you're eating dinner um, just to talk and find out what they're doing during the day. Um, bringing bag lunch rather than fast food. Uh, maybe your child can pack it themselves, or maybe, you're gonna, maybe, they, maybe you can do it for them. Um, and if they have soccer practice or some type of football or something after school, instead of giving them, you know, $5 to run to McDonald's real quick, give them a lunch. Just say, here you go, you know, bag lunch, they can eat it. It's going to be more nutritious for them, give them more energy um, and less fat as well. So that could work great. Again, staying involved in your child's life is important. Um, that healthy foods, again, which we'll get to what kinds of foods you can keep in your house to be considered healthy foods. And encourage diet pop rather than regular. Though pop in general, we don't encourage, but if, you're gonna, if your kids are going to drink pop or if you're going to drink pop, you at least want to make it diet instead of the regular. Okay, adult years. This one I think is particularly important for college students, getting familiar with grocery stores. Um, I know a lot of times I'll look in the checkout line and I see people going through and they have all like the, the frozen pizzas and they've got all, you know, just the convenience, quick, easy things. I know being a college student, can be difficult, you don't have a lot of time, you're in class all day, so it can be really hard. Um, but if you get familiar with your grocery store, you're going to be able to pick the best type of pizza or the best type of maybe a lean cuisine meal or a healthy choice, the frozen meals that are at least going to be better for you. The grocery store is such a huge place where you can learn so much by just picking things up and looking at labels. I noticed out on the um, American Heart Association table, they've got a nice handout, I think I brought it actually, that talks about how to read a food label in detail. So if you're not real sure, you'd, you'd like to you know, make sure that you know how, please pick that up. Limit eating out and avoid fast foods. Fast foods. Um, they're getting to be where you can have some better choices. Um, although people think a lot of times that a salad from McDonald's is a better choice. And realistically, you easily can get 800 calories in a salad from McDonald's if you put the dressing on it. Um, so it's going to be, you know, kind of monitoring that, looking at the package to see that there's 660 calories in that packet of dressing. Um, another thing is something like Panera. Again, people think maybe going to Panera is a healthier choice. Just about every sandwich they have, including the vegetable sandwiches, have, again, about 800 ca calories. So you really need to be careful. Anytime you eat out, you're going to get some extra calories without even maybe realizing it. Planning ahead, knowing your day, knowing what it entails. Um, 
if you've got to stay late for a meeting at work, if you, you know, know that you've got to study, you know, for six hours straight, bringing food with you instead of having nothing, being starving, you end up overeating. So planning ahead is important. Water. I think this is too often overlooked. Every person should get in at least 64 ounces of fluid every day. Fluid being that non-caloric, so there's no calories in it, and no caffeine in it either. So 64 ounces is, is quite a bit, but once you start doing it, it becomes much easier. You should always you know, have a water bottle with you or something with you that you can, that you can drink. Portion size. Um, another problem with American society in general. You go out to dinner and you get a portion of food, spaghetti for instance, you know, you get this huge plate which you begin to think is a normal portion because that's where you get everywhere you go, but it's not. Technically, one serving of, of, of spaghetti noodles is a third of a cup. That's one serving about 80 calories. What exactly? Doesn't seem right. Not what you get. You're getting, <laughs> you're getting six or seven in one. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about portion sizes in a couple of minutes, but just to show you, this is the size of what a chicken should be. This is about a piece of chicken. This is three ounces. A three ounce piece of meat is an appropriate size for meat. Um, whether it's steak or pork or turkey or chicken, whatever it is, about three ounces. I'm going to pass this around just so you can get a feel for it on your hand. Yeah. Well, it does and it doesn't. Um, I think depending on how many servings may make a difference. For instance, if you have a higher calorie diet, you're going to be allowed more ounces of chicken in a day. So how you split that up, just that you know, depends on how you want to do it. But it is good to not, a lot of chicken breasts are a good eight ounces or nine ounces. <laughs> so it is good to stick with smaller ones. Tap water is excellent, actually. Um, the, the question is tap water versus regular water uh, or bottled water. And I, I believe that either one is fine for your body, but tap water does contain extra minerals. It contains fluoride uh, if you have city water. So there are some good things with tap water. There's absolutely no need to buy bottled water unless you don't particularly like your tap water. But other than that, I would suggest tap over, over bottled. And it's cheaper, absolutely. Very true. All right, exercise. Exercise is so extremely important, and very, very few people get as much exercise as they should. Daily activity is excellent. If you have a job that you move around a lot in, um, if you just tend to walk a lot, that's great. But you really want to try to get your daily activity plus at least 30 minutes of extra activity. Exercise is, needs to be repetitive, purposeful, and planned. So if it's 30 minutes every day at work or 30 minutes every day after work, whatever it is, trying to get that 30 minutes in. And it needs to be something that you enjoy. If you hate walking, if you absolutely hate it, then you need to find something else to do. Maybe it's curves or whatever it may be. Um, finding something that you enjoy doing and that you will be able to stick to doing. I have a picture here of this man who looks rather built, you know, doing his weights. That's not for everybody. You, you know, exercise doesn't have to be going to the gym for three hours a day or anything like that. It's just finding something you enjoy and that you'll stick to. Okay, moving on to the later years now. Generally, during your later years of life, your calorie needs go down because you lose muscle mass. And as you lose muscle mass, um, your metabolism slows down a lot because muscle builds your metabolism up, so the opposite is also true. It is important to stick with strength training as you get older. Um, you know, even using some three-pound weights or, you know, just something, maybe one-pound weights, just some good strength training type things. Water aerobics is excellent if you've got hip problems, knee problems, joint problems. Getting in the water, you're going to have, you're not going to have um, as much resistance. It's resistance. You still have some, but not like the big weight. So it would be an excellent choice for those of you who do have problems like that. With, with older people, though, it tends to, to be that they don't tend to eat as well, especially as they get older in the years. They don't have as much appetite, seem to have meat aversions, don't care to eat meat much. Um, so that would be the time when you would want to encourage vitamin supplementation. Maybe it's to your parents or to yourself to take a multivitamin or even using like Boost or Ensure. If you really feel that you're, you're just not eating as much, it is a good idea to add in some of those Boost or Ensure or something like that. Again, they continue to exercise. And it's important to stay active. Um, I know I, my grandmother is 78 years old, and she works at Hudson's, and she will not quit work, or sorry, Marshall Fields. 
And she will not stop working there. She says the day that she stops working, she'll lose her social circle. And she, she knows it'll just be downhill from there. So I think that staying active and involved, whether it's volunteer work, whatever it may be, to keep yourself involved in the community. OK, um, heart disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Um, what you can do to decrease your risk. Again, there's awesome information out of the American Heart Association booth. And I've brought in a ton of things I'm going to talk about real quick. Um, on cholesterol, there's this guideline which talks all about cholesterol, how to lower it, what normal numbers should be, what the good cholesterol, bad, cholesterols, all, bad cholesterol is. It's an awesome one. Also talks a little bit about snacking. I've got um, things on basic carbohydrate counting. Um, this can be great for everyone, not just diabetics. This diet is a healthy diet. It's well-rounded. talks about lots of different um, food groups. Uh, for those of you who are in school, Morningstar Farms brand products. They're soy-based products, but a lot of them are microwavable. They're quick, they're easy, and they're tasty. So this gives you some different recipes that you can use um, for Morningstar Farms products. And then I've also got some... Um, coupons for different cereals and things like that as well. So when we're finished here, you can feel free to come up and take some of those. And I also have some free samples of um, Kashi cereal. It's actually the heart, heart to heart. It's like little Cheerios that have extra fiber in them. OK, back to what you can do to decrease your risk. Decreasing your risk of heart disease, maintaining a healthy weight. Everything we've talked about, basically eating a variety of foods, keeping up with your exercise, drinking your water, it's all going to help you to maintain a healthy weight. Continue with the physical activity. Stop smoking. If any of you are smoking now, I would suggest that be your number one thing to begin to do is stop smoking and then continue to work on healthy eating and exercise. But um, there's a lot of classes through your local hospital. I, you know, they may have even some here that you can get to, some smoking cessation classes. Increasing whole grains in your diet. Um, I know some of you know me, and I am a huge proponent of fiber. I talk about fiber a lot. Fiber is found mainly in bread products, wheat products. Um, it's found a lot in cereals. It's also found in fruits and vegetables. You've got a lot of fiber over there with your fruits and veggie trays over there. Um, and in the cereals I was talking about, the Kashi brand cereals, they do tend to have a lot of extra fiber in them. Helps keep you full, maintain a full feeling for longer. So when you're looking for breads, for instance, if you look on the food label under dietary fiber, if you look for three grams of fiber or more, that's going to be a great choice in bread for you. It's a good way to try to figure out which one is the best because you can't always trust the labels the front on the front of the package. Um, increasing fruits and vegetables. Um, really important, pretty easy to do, actually. You were asking about healthy snacks earlier. Fruits are great snacks because you don't have to refrigerate them. You can throw them in your bag if you're in school. Just throw like a banana or an apple or something like that. You know, you hear a lot, I hear a lot as a dietitian, that people think that bananas are fattening. Not the case. Bananas are very high in potassium, and they're very good for you. So they're just as good as an apple or a peach or a plum or any of those other things. Reducing stress. Easier said than done. Um, exercise is a huge thing you can do to decrease the stress in your life. Um, or finding something you like to do. Maybe it's taking time and reading a book, taking a bath, you know, whatever it may be for you. Try to find something to help you reduce the stress in your life. And then, kind of, I probably should have this up top here, but controlling your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and your diabetes is incredibly important um, to help prevent heart disease. I'm going to talk a little bit about fats. Now, I could talk about fats this whole time. There's so many different kinds of fats, and there's so many different foods that fall into that category. But I'm going to focus on the bad kind of fats, which is the saturated fats. They, they raise your overall cholesterol, lower your good cholesterol, and raise your bad cholesterol. So the worst kind you can have. Um, what you can do to decrease that saturated fat is to use low-fat or non-fat products. If you use sour cream or if you use cream cheese or any of those things, using that low-fat or non-fat uh, variety. Meats are where you're going to find most of your saturated fat. So it's important that you trim any fat that you see off the edge of your meats and then to look for more lean meats. Um, like chicken, fish, turkey, anything like that is going to be better. If you're not already, switch to fat-free skim milk or 1% milk. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> saw this look. <laughs> I see that look a lot in my field. Um, 
However, I will tell you, if you switch from using 2% milk down to skim milk, if you have one glass of milk a day, it will save you about 10 pounds a year. Real significant. People think, what's the difference? 30 calories between a skim milk and a whole milk. What's 30 calories? You do 30 calories one time a day for seven days times, you know, four weeks in a month. You know, you just kind of, it adds up quickly. So it is important. And I would suggest doing it slowly. If you drink whole milk, switch to 2% for a while. Stick with that. Once you get used to that, then go down to 1% and slowly work your way down. If you switch from whole milk to skim milk, you're not going to drink it. You'll quit buying milk altogether, and you don't want to do that. Okay, decreasing risk for obesity. A lot of the things, you know, it's what we've already talked about. It's basically adopting a generally healthy diet, trying to eat more healthy foods, staying away from the donuts, as he said earlier, um, avoiding the extras as well, I think is a huge one, um, like mayonnaise, sour cream, butter, um, cheeses on items. Those little things that you add add tremendous amounts of calories. So trying to either eliminate them or at least cut back on them, or if you're eating them from home, using a low-fat product. Portion sizes. These are appropriate portion sizes. You saw the chicken earlier, which is about three ounces. Um, fruit, uh, about a half cup. Uh, meat, we talked about the three ounces. The bagel is the one I like. When you go to like, um, I want to say Bagel Frago, I think that's in East Lansing, but if you go to any of the bagel places, when you get bagels, they're like this big, going to have probably about six, five, 600 calories in them. They're huge. They're like four servings. What an appropriate ser serving for a bagel is about a half of a bagel, about the width of a large coffee lid not real large. Because you think if you ate the whole bagel, and say you're eating it for a snack, you get 500 calories in the bagel, and then you put your cream cheese on there, and you might get, I don't know, 200, 250 calories. That's a huge snack. That's, for a lot of you, that's probably about half of your calories in a day just from that one snack, or maybe it's breakfast. Um, baked potato, about the size of a computer mouse. Um, and pancake or waffle, about a four inch CD size. What was that? Of uh, what was that? Oh, the pancake. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, just one little pancake. <laughs> Not very big. And how many? Yeah. Well, you know, within, within reason, you take maybe two, and then you see how you, you wait your 20-minute rule, and then decide if you want more. <laughs> okay, risk factors for type 2 diabetes. Um, older age, obesity, family history, gestational diabetes, and physical inactivity. Decreasing your risk, lifestyle changes is going to be your best bet. Improving your diet, limiting concentrated sweets, again, that not smoking, regular physical activity, and early screening and treatments. This talks about um, if you want to talk to a registered dietitian about your particular needs or a particular problem that you're having, you can call us at MMPC or just contact your primary care provider. Um, or your local hospital will also often offer specific classes. Um, I do have a couple of minutes for questions, and I want to get to this one first, the healthy snacks. One of the things I would do definitely is, like I said, the fruits and vegetables. Nuts can be a healthy snack. Um, the only thing you have to be careful with there is to make sure you don't eat too many of them because they are high in the good fats and calories. Um, string cheeses can work well. These are just kind of for everyone, not just kids, but for ev everyone, even kids. String cheese works great. Um, s sandwiches, if you're on the go a lot, you know, getting even a peanut butter and sugar-free jelly <laughs> sandwich would be good. How many of you have tried sugar-free jelly? Great. It tastes pretty good. It really is. It's, you're going to save yourself a lot of calories, and you're not missing too much on the flavor. Um, cereal. Cereals can be a great snack just to have them kind of, if it's a healthy cereal that they're snacking on. So that's a couple for you. How about other questions? Yes. Soy milk can be great. Um, I would definitely recommend anyone who would prefer to do soy milk um, can help. It has a lot of antioxidants in it. can be great for that. Um, versus, versus cow milk in general, if a child is under 2 years of age, they need 2% milk or higher. Um, after that, skim 1% for everyone. As far as amount of milk, in one glass of skim milk, you get about 90 calories. Uh, the recommendations are to get 3 to 5 dairy servings in a day. So if you didn't eat yogurt, you didn't eat cheese, you didn't eat cottage cheese and all, then I would suggest drinking about three glasses of milk a day. If you eat cheese, if you eat yogurt, if you eat cottage cheese, probably one glass a day. And it also depends on, you know, what your goals are. Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to maintain your weight? Or are you trying to gain weight? 
you know, depending on that would also depend on how much milk she take in in a day. Yeah. Uh huh. I have a bunch of information up here that I would suggest you get, but I will tell you um, cutting back on the saturated fat is going to be one of the first things you can do. Um, you know, making sure you're using lean meats, trimming fat on any meats that you do have. Um, alcohol, not that you drink, but in general, can raise triglycerides. <laughs> Beer in general, you know, alcohol just does do that. Yeah. <laughs> Reducing stress, there you go, another one. Um, so those are a couple things that you can do. Eating more fruits and vegetables um, can also help. How about other questions? <laughs> do you have a question? <laughs> There is and there isn't. Actually, I've got a sheet up here, too, you can pick up, and it'll tell you how many calories you should have a day. And in that, well, depending on your size, you have to figure out if you have an 1,800, probably 2,000 calorie diet, it'll tell you how many servings of meat, how many servings of vegetables, how many servings of fruit you should have in a day. So that would be the sheet that you can look at. And it goes from, I think, a 1,000 calorie diet up to 2,800 calorie diet, and with all the different increments. So you can get that to see kind of how many servings you should have each day. Any other questions? Okay, a couple, couple more things I'll kind of touch on um, that, I, that weren't in the slide, but eating at the same time every day is also extremely important. Eating breakfast is key. You must eat breakfast even if you're not hungry. Um, a carnation instant breakfast mi mixed with like a skim milk works excellent. It's quick, it's easy, you can drink it on your way, um, so that would be an excellent thing to use. If you're trying to lose weight too, the lean cuisines or the, even the slim fast shakes, if they're like the carb conscious kind, can work great too. You can use them as meal replacements or as fillers as well if you need them. If you get hungry, it does give you something that's um, structured, planned, that you can do. Any other questions? All right. All set? Nice hand for Mindy who did an excellent job. Thank you.